First, we got this new profile photo on Morgan Wallen's Instagram. Then we had him sharing another new publicity photo, which I gotta thank the photographer. I mean, he already made a thumbnail for me. Look at the vignette and everything. And then today, the day that Morgan Wallen announced the big stadium tour, he also announced that he is dropping three new tracks and there's this seeming album cover of him all in a grainy photo in front of a cabin. It's given a little bit of like American heartbreak, but I don't know. The big story here is that Morgan Wallen is dropping new music. Yes, he has not actually put out a new album since Dangerous in January 2021, even though he's had kind of these little releases like Thought You Should Know or You Prove or Broadway Girls, things to kind of tide it over. It hasn't had the feeling of like we are getting a new album, and I think that's why people are really hyped for these tracks and why I'm sitting here at freaking half past midnight about to film a reaction. And I don't think I've done a reaction on this channel since maybe Stick That In Your Country song by Eric Church. Stick that or like the yummy remix with Justin Bieber and Florida Georgia Line. Hang out time for playing, I'ma clean your whole play. Girl, I'ma lick it up. It's been a long while, but I'm just gonna check these songs out and see what I think. And maybe I'll love them and I can uh, redeem myself in the eyes of the people that were very mad that I gave Dangerous a six out of 10. People still get salty at me about that. But you know, here's the good news, everybody. My opinion does not matter as much as the will of the people. And obviously, Dangerous is the chosen one as an album. It's like been the freaking biggest country album for two straight years. So, you know, don't worry too much what I say. But I hope to like these. I love Morgan's voice, obviously. And I love a lot of his music. And Thought You Should Know is one of my favorite songs of the year. And why, why am I giving all this preamble? Let's just listen to these. I guess the first one I'm gonna do is One Thing at a Time. That is kind of the, what they're all categorized under on Spotify. It says that the this one is written by Ashley Gorley, Ernest, Morgan Wallen, and Ryan Volkssisak. Let's hear it. Very earnesty off the bat. <laughs> it's like freaking 80s new wave. This is cool. All right. Okay, we're off to a strong start. A really different, more sophisticated kind of 80s sound. There's a lot of those sort of like shimmery guitar sounds. I don't even know how you make that kind of 80s synth sound that kind of like runs through that song. It's such a different vibe for Morgan, it's way cleaner and less redneck. And the song, I think, is like a really tightly written song. It's all playing with the idea of addiction. And he's doing all these coping mechanisms to get over a relationship. And he's saying like, I'm not gonna feel bad about everything I'm drinking and smoking and doing because I'm trying to quit you. This is what he's telling that girl. He's like, I can take your number out of my phone or I can stop doing all these things, but like, I can only quit one thing at a time. And currently I'm quitting you. So I'm gonna be indulging in everything else. Definitely the best, like, coolest lyrical moment. Let me find it. If you ain't gonna kiss me, then I'll take some whiskey, some grizzly, nicotine, amphetamines too, if you want me to stop. I loved the kiss me, whiskey, grizzly. Uh, there's a ton of assonance in that, and it just seems like, you know, it just flows really cool. It breaks up the lyric. And then same with amphetamines and nicotine. Although, there's a part of me that's like, bro, I heard what you said on Living the Dream. Living the dream is killing me, killing me, killing me substances aren't treating you well so like you know but on the whole I think that was cool that is just not what I would have expected at all so check on the first one that's a cool song I wonder if that's gonna be the lead single or if you need something more epic although I don't even know if Morgan has like lead singles because they just kind of rolled out thought you should know to radio like a week ago so you know that's the new way we release music it's just like why are we worried about release dates and stuff? People just, you know, throw a lot of stuff out there. Clearly it has worked fine for Morgan and for Zach Bryan. Have you seen their streaming numbers? Um, BT Dubs, spoiler alert, that'll be a video soon. Okay, let's go to the next song. It's called Days That End In Y. This one is written by Blake Pendergrass and John Byron, who are the team that wrote 865, as well as someone named Driver Williams. What a great name. It feels like a fake name. Alrighty, let's hear it. Starting out with steel. <laughs> I was sending prayers up, but they must have been stopped by the ceiling fan that I'm staring at. 
Okay, again, that song has a shimmer on it. I can still make the whole place shimmer. Like, the production on these, Joey Moy is like, nailing it. It's like kind of in that direction a little bit that I love of Seven Summers. That's a vibe of Morgan I really love. Um, he's full snarl on that song. Like, I kind of had to really scrunch my face to, to really pay attention and listen sometimes. Cause I'm like, what are you saying about taillights, pedal down? Well, goodbye, sounds when it's pedal down. Um, but basically, you know, we're in, it's another tear in my beer, sad song. His days are starting with whiskey. So, so far we're getting kind of like a breakup album. Days that end in Y, obviously W-H-Y, which got to give a shout out to my buddy Derek Austin, who also has a song called Days That End in Y. Uh, but that's a good hook. Really pretty song. I love the detail of the ceiling fan. All the numbers at the beginning reminded me of 865. Um, and then I liked the detail about her makeup bag. That was really pretty. But yeah, that's just like a lovely sad song, you know? I don't think it's anything super crazy, but uh, man, those guitar, it's the guitar on that song that I liked. It almost sounds like bell tones. Tuesdays, keep me up all night. And I don't even know if it's guitar. I'm gonna take a stab at this because long ago, when I heard, I think Growing Up by Thomas Rhett, I was obsessed with the guitar. And the guitar turned out to be a bazooki. And I'm going to say maybe we're getting like a beautiful bazooki sound on that song. And someone is going to DM me later and tell me I was right or wrong. Yeah, another one I like. I still don't know if that's the, I don't know what the lead single is. I'm going to maybe, I feel like one thing at a time is more of a lead single than that was. But that's real damn pretty. And now we got one final video. It is called Tennessee Fan. Tennessee Fan. You know how there's been all this like conversation around Megan Maroney's Tennessee Orange and there's been all the questions of like, are they dating? Is this written about Morgan? Or was it written about Connor Smith and his song Orange and White? And then she's been asked about it in interviews and it's essentially been confirmed. She's like, yeah, on the cover, that is Morgan's shirt. And now he's got a song called Tennessee Fan. So, you know, I think once again, we probably have our answer here. Let's see who wrote this song. Ashley Gorley, once again, as well as Mark Holman, Hardy, and Morgan Wallen. Let's hear it, Tennessee Fan. So far, immediately, this is the most familiar to me as a contemporary country sound, which is nice. I mean, it's like definitely an appealing start. <laughs> okay, so we're not with a Georgia girl in uh, in this song. It's with an Alabama girl who <laughs> calls a little deep south of Delta Gamma. Um, but man, what another, it's another moment for college, college football songs. We had I Hate Alabama by Connor Smith. We also had Orange and White by him. We had Megan Maroney's Tennessee Orange. We had Clayton Mullins' Burnt Orange. And now we got Morgan Wallen's Tennessee Fan. So college football and country music continue their marriage of 2022. <laughs> Perfectly fine song, but we're done, okay? We're done with this exact plot line. You know, three songs in one year is enough of like uh, a romance uh, that transcends college football rivalry. Like, it is kind of like a cute idea. It's very funny. It's very Southern. Um, and yet, like, w we've done it, you know? I would say Tennessee Orange remains the, the top one. That song is so beautiful. Um, but Tennessee Fan is a good song too, um, as is Orange and White. And you know, now, no more going into songwriting rooms, everyone, and being like, you know what we should do tomorrow? We should write a song that we're gonna pitch to this bro over here. Um, and it's gonna, it, like, let's do a song about college football and romance. No, no, we're done, okay? But that said, it's nice. That is, to me, definitely the least interesting of these songs. That doesn't mean it's bad, but definitely the least interesting. I feel like it's probably gonna be the most popular though. And people are going to be like, Grady, you just don't care that much about football. And like, uh, it speaks for a lot of people. Fine. Okay. You're right. You're right. I don't. Um, I went to the University of Virginia, famously terrible at football. 
And uh, also, I don't care. But, you know, a cute enough song. My least favorite of the three, but none of these are bad. I think I would rank them in the order I heard them. I think One Thing at a Time, then Days That End in Y, then Tennessee Fan. One Thing at a Time is a definite, like, yeehaw. And then I would give a light yeehaw to days that end in Y, and I would give a, a, a strong ye to Tennessee fan. Um, but it's not just about my opinion. I want to hear from my buddy Overshore. Uh, Y'all know Overshore. I'm obsessed with his channel. He's so talented and makes great stuff. So I was just like, yo, dude, if you're awake right now, do you want to hop on a Zoom and I can just get your thoughts really quickly? So let's hear what Mr. Evan has to say. Thank you for catching up with me at 1.20 in the morning. Um, <laughs> We're we getting deep listened. in. <laughs> we both listened to Morgan's new tracks. So just give me off the top, like, how would you rank these three songs? So it feels kind of wrong, feels kind of spicy, but I'm going to go one thing at a time at number one. I don't know if that's my hot take or not. And then I'm going to say Tennessee fan. And then that would leave Days of Ending Wyatt number three, which feels like a bit of an injustice or a disjustice because I do think it's a good song, but it just of the three. I'm right now, as it is at 120 in the morning, I'm going to say that order there <laughs> okay well we have the same number one um i totally think one thing at a time was the most interesting uh what do you like about it i well he mentioned so one thing i noticed was when he mentioned his kid that kind of caught me off guard i was like oh shoot and so when we're going into this album i wonder if his kid's gonna play a bit of a role in it it's kind of got this indie pop vibe and i think it's like i think that makes it unique but at the same time, while it's this indie pop thing, it's not pop in the way Kane Brown's going to go pop. It's still very instrumental. So it, it's kind of conflicting when I'm listening to it. I'm like, this is very poppy. But at the same time, like, I'm really liking what he's doing here. It kind of reminded me of on Gabe Lee's new record. He's got that song, Kind of Man. And if you yeah. want I just trying to, you know, sneak a Gabe Lee reference into what's going to be a very well viewed video. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 hype Gabe Lee up here. We give Gabe Lee his platform. Come are you now. are you are we at um are we at the critical mass of college football songs? Have you it had It sure as heck feels like it for a Canadian who does not go to an American college or watch football. It really feels like all y'all singing about college football and I'm here like OHL hockey. <laughs> I thought they were all like pretty solid. Like, yeah, I, I was interested to see how he was going to come back. So hearing them was very interesting. I think they're three good songs. None knocked me off my chair, but at the same time, none left me like disappointed. I think it's a good reintroduction. I'm just super interested to see the album cuts on the album that's inevitably coming out by the way he's talking do you so. think it's called one thing at a time or that's just like they haven't they're gonna like hold back the album title i don't know because like i feel like they hold it back even though they named the tour like one uh one show at a time i think i think they're holding it back it, he's a big enough know. star that you can like that you, yeah everything you can don't be its own media cycle yeah, you don't need to like pump out all the like massive billboards everywhere. Like he can just log on like three hours before and say, hey, yo, I'm <laughs> dropping all these songs and they're going to blow up. It looks like the top performing one right now, and, and it'll probably be number one by tomorrow. But uh, at number five is one thing at a time. Tennessee fan is at 30. And it's probably because one thing at a time is first <laughs> that's probably part of it and days that end in right. y is at 39 so so currently close, you yeah. are aligned with the public which isn't always great <laughs> you're aligned with all 17 <laughs> itunes digital downloaders um, <laughs> oh fair yeah are you gonna do like a whole video on this probably but come on it's it's morgan wallen you cover no, country get music. Clicks. Get those clicks. Well, so I won't be out as soon it. as yours, but <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to stay up and edit right now for a few hours. Yeah, I got work at 830. So <laughs> I'm what? not exactly, bro, I'm putting in a shift here. <laughs> okay, so that's it. You know, I don't know where my ring light is. I look better without this ring light right now. Anyway, those are my thoughts and Evan's thoughts on the new Morgan Wallen songs. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And uh, hey, bye. A reaction. Haven't done those in forever.